Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ bless. Most High in Christ bless. This is 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Amaziah with me today. Soldier Shalomaya. Soldier Shalomaya. Okay, we're here in IYZ, D.C. Today we're going to touch on a topic. The topic is, were the prophets as soft as your pastor? That's the topic today. Were the prophets soft? Were they mealy mouth? Yellow makes me sad. Always about to cry kind of men like your pastor. So now let's start in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. Let's start right there. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 10 and verse 33. And he said unto me, stand up manfully and I will advise thee. See that? The Lord can't use you if you're a mealy mouth and a punk and a coward, man. The Lord is looking for men, real men, alpha men, not no betas, not yellow makes me sad, not mealy mouth, all in their emotions. Read it again. And he said unto me, stand up manfully. The Lord, brothers and sisters, is looking for a few good men, specifically 144,000 real alpha men, men of the Lord. So now we're going to go through the Bible and see. Were the prophets mini mouth and soft like your pastor or were they real men? Before we get that, 2 Ezra 2.47. Let's go to 2 Ezra 2 and 47. How should the, how should the man stand up? 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 47. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God uh -huh. whom they have confessed in the world. So the real men are going to confess Christ, the black Messiah, throughout the whole world. Read. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood that, so that did what? That did what? Then I began to greatly commend them that, that, what? that stood. That stood or stand. So stiffly, so stiffly for the name of the Lord. See that that stood, that stood up stiffly for the name. They're not going to veer to the right. They're not going to veer to the left. Now, give me John chapter two and thirteen. Let's see the attributes of Christ. Maybe he was soft. And when you when you see the King of Kings movie on around Easter, and he says, "For God so loved the world," did Christ really talk like that? Was he mealy mouth and soft? Let's see. Come on. John chapter 2 and verse 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. The Jews' Passover. We talk about the Passover. Everybody got their nice garment on. They going, they ready for some good lamb, some good wine, and, some, and to celebrate, right? The Lord's Passover. They feeling good, right? Keep reading. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem uh -huh. and found in the temple those that sold oxen. So during the Passover... These brothers, and these brothers were selling in the Passover, man. Go ahead. And sold oxen and uh -huh. sheep uh -huh. and doves Read. and the changers of money sitting. Read. And when he had made a scourge of small cords. So Christ saw what was going on during the Passover. Christ made a scourge of small cords, meaning a cat of nine tails. He took this small, these, these cords of small, these scourges of small cords and did what? He drove them all out of the temple. Christ was whooping ass. That's what Christ was doing. He was beating them uh, uh, with those uh, small cords. You understand? That's what Christ was doing. You know how a Negro is with his money. He don't play about his money. Yeah. Christ went in there and wreaked havoc in the temple. You understand? That's what Christ did. He wasn't so. He said, brother, please, can you stop? Please. Hallelujah. Just stop. I am the son of God, and I'm here for you, brother. Please. He didn't do that. He took some, he took some start beating, whooping behind, whooping grown men in the temple. Keep reading. And the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold doves, Take these hence, make not my father's house, and house of merchandise. See that Christ said, get the stuff out of my father's house, man. What the hell wrong with you? Now, we read about Christ. Let's go to John 18 and 10. 
Let's stay in the same book of John. Same book. So Christ was the alpha. Christ was, Christ was not mealy mouth. He was not soft like your pastor. Come on, come on. John chapter 18 and verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What the hell? Simon had a weapon. Why the hell Simon got a weapon for? The hell's wrong with Simon? Simon had a sword and drew it. Now remember, the Romans just came for Christ with Judas Iscariot, okay? So my man, Peter, the apostle, drew a sword on him. What happened? Get, keep going. And smote the high priest servant and cut off his right ear. You know how much precision and precise you got to be to take that heavy sword and bend your wrist and whoosh, cut off somebody's ear with it? The brother, you see a sword come, you don't duck. You don't move to the side, to the left. <laughs> Peter still caught him. Wow. Take off your ear, man. That, that is a warrior, brothers and sisters. That is a trained warrior. Not just a mealy mouth man. Not a beta. Not, not a cry baby. I'm going to cry the scriptures to you. No. Give me, is that it? Yeah. Give me Nehemiah 13 and 23. Let's read about our forefather, Nehemiah. Maybe he was so soft and sweet like your pastor and stayed inside. That's what your pastor did. Your pastor stays inside. No, the real men of the Lord are on the streets battling their people, battling the minds of our people. That's what the real men of the Lord are doing. Come on. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 23. In those days also saw I Jews. That had married wives of Ashdod, Read. of Amman, and of Moab. Japanese and Chinese. And their children. And Ham. Go ahead. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. Because these women were teaching the children. Go ahead. But according to the language of each people. Read. And I contended with them. So Nehemiah said, yo, what you doing, man? You're not supposed to be having women, uh, children by these Chinese women, these Japanese women, and these Hermetic women. What's wrong with y'all Israelites? Go ahead. And cursed them. He was cursing them out. Go ahead. And smote certain of them. What'd he do? Smote certain of them. He put hands on them. He smacked the hell out of them. What's wrong with you? Go ahead. And plucked off their hair. And do what? Plucked off oh, their Nehemiah hair. Oh, Nehemiah got physical brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. So the prophet Nehemiah put hands on these on our brothers and sisters. It's for them to act right. Jump into verse 20. Verse 20. So the merchants and the sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Uh-huh. So I, now, the merchants, the other nations were selling to the Israelites on the Lord's Sabbath. They would, stay, they would stay by the wall, by the gates, and sell to us their products. Go ahead. Then I testified against them uh -huh. and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the Yo, wall? Yo, what the hell are you doing still here, man? It's sundown. Get up out of here. Go ahead. If you do so again... I will lay hands on you. What, 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 did, what did Nehemiah I say? I will lay hands on you. Nehemiah said, oh man, if you don't get up out of here, I'm going to put my hands on you. I'm putting hands and feet on you right there. Go ahead. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. So Nehemiah got them up out of there. You understand? He had to, he had to threaten physically, bodily harm to these people. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 4. And Samuel did that. Which the Lord spake. So Samuel did that which the Lord spake. And came to Bethlehem. Uh -huh. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. Oh man. When they saw Samuel coming, they trembled at Samuel. They were fearful of the prophet of God. You understand? Because the prophets of God played no games with, with the people, y'all. You understand? Keep going. And said. And, the, and our, our people that trembled said what? Comest thou peaceably? Hey, Samuel... You, you here for peace, Samuel? We don't want no problems with you, sir. We don't want no issues. We going to listen to you and do exactly what you say to do, sir. Okay? Jump up. Go to 15 and 1. Let's see what Samuel told our forefather Saul, King Saul at the time. For Samuel, chapter 15 and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul. What did he say? 
the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, uh -huh. over Israel. Over Israel. Okay. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Okay, okay. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. Who's Amalek today in the earth? The so-called Jewish people. The Jewish people. They, yeah, they are Jewish. They like a Jew. They like you. They, are, they like you. You understand? They're sort of like you. They keep some of your customs, some of your ways, but they are not the original thing. You are the original, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Go ahead. How he laid wait for him in the way uh -huh. when he came up from Egypt. Go ahead. Now go and smite Amalek. What did Samuel say? Smite Amalek. Am he said go and smite Amalek. And utterly destroy all that they have. This is the prophet of the Lord speaking here. I've never seen pastor talk like this before. Go ahead. And spare them not. Do, what? Spare them not. What about, what about the love of Jesus? Read it again. Spare them not. Woo wee. Go ahead. Go but, ahead, prophet. But slay both man and woman. Damn. Infant and suckling. Uh-huh. Ox and sheep. Uh-huh. Camel and ass. Wow. That's what the prophet of the the prophet of God said to kill somebody. Wow. Young and old, woman, man, child, utterly destroyed. That's what the prophet said. Jump to verse 17. And mind you, in IYC, we do not advocate violence against anybody or any race or any particular person. No, we do not. So that we are reading what our forefathers, we are reading the spirit of our forefathers. You understand? So read that now. Verse 17. 17. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Uh -huh. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said. And said so what? Go utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. So now, remember now, Saul, King Saul did not complete the mission. He saved the best stuff for himself, the sheep and the goats. You understand? That's what, that's what Saul did, King Saul did. So now he's getting rebuked by the prophet Samuel. Keep reading. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Why didn't you obey what God said to do, King Saul? But didst thou fly upon the spoil? And this evil in the sight of the Lord. You did evil in the sight of God. Jump to verse 32. So now, remember now, he kept King Ah Agag alive. King Saul did not kill King Agag. Let's see what Saul, what King uh, uh, the prophet Samuel does verse with Agag. Go ahead. Then said Samuel, bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Uh -huh. And Agag came unto him deceitfully. Delicately. Delicately. And Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. He, he, the, the Amalekites said, hey man, surely death is past for me. I'm good to go now, man. He kept me alive, man. I'm good. Go ahead. And Samuel said, as thy sword had made woman childless, so shall thy, so shall thy mother be childless among women. Damn. He said, hey man, your sword made, made women childless, made mothers childless. Your mama going to be childless today too. Go ahead. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. And what did Samuel do? What did, Sa the, what did the man of God do? Hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Hey Amen. The prophet of God hewed a man in pieces. Okay? That's what the prophet did. Wow. Numbers 25 and 1. Let's see about Moses. So we read about Christ. We read about Peter, Nehemiah, Samuel. Let's get Moses. Numbers chapter 25 and verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Oh, man. Here go Israel with flat back Moab. Okay, go ahead. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Uh -huh. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. So now they join themselves unto Moab. Go ahead. And Israel joined and served their gods. Go ahead. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. Uh -huh. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, What did the Lord say to Moses? Take all the heads of the people 
and hang them up before the Lord what against the, the sun. What the hell? He, so Moses had to hang some folks and put their heads on a pole. In other words, cut their heads off, put it on these poles against the sun for all Israel to see. Go ahead. That the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. Read. And Moses said unto the judge of Israel. What did, what did the man of God say to the judges? Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. Damn. That's Moses, the meekest man in the Bible. You understand? That's Moses. Meek. Ain't talking about just soft. No, it's talking about he's meek to the word of the Lord. He will do what the Lord commanded him to do at all costs. Let's go to Joshua, Moses' servant, Joshua. So these, once again, brothers and sisters, the men of the Lord were not soft like your pastor. Come on. Joshua, chapter 10 and verse 24. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, uh -huh. that Joshua called for all the men of Israel. So now, remember now, in this book of uh, Joshua chapter 10, these five kings, Joshua took their lands. These five kings ran together and hid themselves in a cave. They found where they was hid. They rolled a stone over it and kept fighting. Now, they destroyed those five nations. They came back for those five kings. They rolled the stone back. Bring them kings out. Read it again. And it came to pass when they brought those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him. What did, what did Joshua, the man of God, do, say to them? Come near. Come over here, man. Let me talk to y'all real quick about put, these kings. Put your feet upon the necks of these kings. Hey, hey, you, you. Put your foot on his neck right there. Go ahead. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. Read. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Don't fear, don't be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong, brothers and sisters, and of good courage. Read. For thus shall the Lord do all your enemies against whom you fight. You see what, God, you see what, see what Joshua said? This is what's going to happen to all the enemies that fight against the children of God, the Israelites. Read. And afterward, Joshua smote them and slew them. Joshua smote these kings, slew them, and hanged them. Joshua killed these kings. Go ahead. On five trees. Then he hung them up. Come on. And they were hanging upon the trees until evening. See that? So that's what the man of God Joshua did. What are we reading about? Warriors. Soldiers of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Give me 2nd Ezra 14. 2nd Ezra 14. And I want verse 13. So now, brothers and sisters, remember now, to be a man of God, you got to be a warrior, a soldier. Now, we don't physically do anything. This is a spiritual fight. We got to spiritually get our minds right and keep God's laws. Second now, Ezra. Here's, here's the first way you keep God's laws. Once, once you are, are, are now um, uh, uh, um, proven to be keeping God's laws, here's what you got to do. Here's what a real man of God will do right here. Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Do what? Set thine house in order. In order to be a man of God, you must set your house in order. Your family got to be right on one accord with the man of the Lord in that house. You understand? Read it again. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Set your house in order, brother. And reprove thy people. Then you go out on the streets and you teach your people repentance. Go ahead. Comfort such of them as to be in trouble. See that? That's what we do. We go to the streets and comfort our people with the scriptures. Let them know there's a better way. There's a better way to do things. Your past ain't doing that. I don't see your past out on North and North Penn, Penn Street in, in a, a, um, the, the heart of Baltimore. Your past is in a building. The real men have got out on the streets. Read it again. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Read. And reprove thy people. Read. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. And do what? And now renounce corruption. So brothers and sisters, that's 15 minutes with the captains. I hope you learned something. The men of God are different than your pastor. They're not soft and sweet and mealy mouth like your, and ran by women like your pastor. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power. 
while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.